Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Peter Knox. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. The Sunday is the first Sunday of the season of creation. The season of creation, as you all know, goes from the 1st of September until the 4th of October. The 4th of October being the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. The Catholic Church has joined recently this ecumenical, this worldwide ecumenical um, celebration of creation, celebration of the gifts of God for the whole world. It's something that doesn't diminish our Catholic identity because we're celebrating with Christians around the world, those who are not even Catholic, but it actually enhances our Christian identity because we're joining other Christians in a great Christian activity. The title of this season of creation for this year is a home for all, and then there's a question mark after that. Do we really believe that this home which God has given us is a home for all, for all creatures, not just human beings, but for the insects and the birds and the bees and the animals under the sea? Is our home a home for all? Or do we think of this home as just my home, for my family, for my race, for my human being, my human species? So at the beginning of this Mass, at the beginning of this season, let's ask ourselves, are we really hospitable? Are we really open to sharing our home with people, with other creatures all around this world? I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by you we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. 
He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert, and burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Come, Lord, and save us. Come, Lord, and save us. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Come, Come, Lord, Lord, and and save save us. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Come, Come, Lord, and and save save us. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Sion, from age to age. Come, Come, Lord, Lord, and and save us. us. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brethren, show no partiality, as you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man with gold rings and in fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, Have a seat here, please while you say to the poor man, Stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, through the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay his hand upon him. And taking him aside from the multitude privately, Jesus put his finger into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You probably don't remember it, but when you were baptized, The deacon or the priest probably used the words that Jesus used in today's gospel, Ephata, be opened. The minister who baptized you had the option to include this little rite, to touch your ears and your mouth with his thumb, pronouncing the word Ephata, be opened. This very beautiful symbolism is that your ears and your mouth open 
with your ears and your mouth open, you will hear the word of Christ and proclaim it with your mouth. And Jesus' marvelous deeds were told around the world, as people said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. As you were baptized, you were baptized prophet, priest, and king. And that's what we say is the Christian baptism. You became a member of the Christian people. Your task became to announce the good news of salvation. That's what we all do as prophets. We speak the good news of salvation. Your parents and your godparents made promises on your behalf that you will reject evil and profess your faith. Part of our Christian identity, the identity then is to be prophet. That is, a person who hears what God says and speaks it to others, even though this word may be uncomfortable or unpopular. That's what prophets do. They speak the word of God. In this short episode of the gospel, which, Math, which Mark has recorded for us, Jesus partially fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah, which was given 800 years previously. We hear in Isaiah's prophecy for Jerusalem that the deaf will hear, the mute will speak, the lame will leak, leap like an antelope, and there will be abundant water in the desert. Waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sands shall become a pool and the thirsty ground become springs of water. God is blessing Jerusalem. In his public ministry, Jesus meets so many of the expectations that the Jewish people had about the coming time of the Messiah. So much so that people began to think of him, Jesus, as the long-awaited Messiah, the anointed one of God, who was to come with divine justice, with recompense, with vindication for God's suffering people, and to save Jerusalem. As Christians, we recognize Jesus Christ as the Savior, and we pin so many of our hopes and expectations on him. We see how he has conquered death, how he has risen from the grave at Easter, and we believe that has enormous implications for us, all of us. We too will be caught up in his triumph over death, the final enemy to be conquered. We too will share in his eternal life if we hand our current earthly life into his hands, if we live in the way that he would like us to live. The Jewish people used to ask God, used to pray to God, to rescue them from slavery, from imprisonment, from kidnapping, from illness, from drought, from war, from famine, from ungodliness, from all kinds of threats. This rescue us, this save us, this concept of salvation wasn't limited to an eternal life once you have died. Save us doesn't mean take us into heaven once we've died. Save us, for the Jewish people, means save us here and now. Be our savior here and now. So too, our relationship, our salvation, is not just about eternal reward and punishment. It's also, importantly, about our day-to-day -day living. We are saved here and now when God rescues us from all kinds of calamity and God pr protects us from threatening disasters. When we are healed for, from illness, or we are kept safe from potential catastrophe, or we're rescued from possible financial embarrassment, this is the work of God. Sometimes God acts through nature. Sometimes God intervenes through other people, like doctors or our family. And as our world is rapidly going towards ecological catastrophe, with global warming, with biodiversity loss, we pray to God without ceasing to save us from the imminent disaster that we can see unfolding, that the scientists are telling us week after week, month after month, there's a problem coming, the world is going into disaster. As we pray to God, we also engage every fiber of our being, every action to prevent this disaster. 
As St. Ignatius of Loyola says, we pray as though everything depended on God, and we act as though everything depended on us. God shares God's salvation widely and generously. God causes the rain to fall on the good and the bad alike. We often say God has no favorites, or God loves unconditionally. These are difficult sayings for us who are making such efforts to live good lives in the hope of reward or in the hope of God's benevolence. But we have to remember that we cannot influence God's total love for us. God loves us unconditionally. We cannot make God love us Christians more than Hindus or Muslims or atheists. God looks at the soul and God sees the goodness in each one of us. That is why God is not swayed by the clothing we wear or the jewelry around our necks. St. James is warning us in the second reading not to make false judgments based on people's appearances. This is not God's way. And James even considers it to be corrupt. My Jerusalem Bible uses the word corrupt to judge people according to their appearances. In fact, we might say this continuing in the line of thought of St. James, it's the wealthier people who are more responsible for the current ecological crisis. The wealthier people who burn more fossil fuels and consume more of the earth's goods. We should look at all people with God's eyes, with the eyes of Jesus, and we should see in everybody the son or daughter of God who needs salvation, who needs a plate of food, who needs a leg or an arm or an ear or a mouth or a soul to be opened to Jesus, who will touch and say, Ephata be opened. Let us stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we pray during this season of creation for the needs of the world and the needs of the Church, we lift our hearts and our minds to God, asking that we too may value every creature. We pray for Pope Francis that he may continue to have the health and energy to be shepherd of the worldwide Christian flock and an example of humility and loving service. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We bring before the Lord all people in crisis, mentioned in the psalm, the oppressed, the hungry, the prisoners, the blind, those who are bowed down, the stranger, the orphans and widows. Lord, be their salvation. Meet them in their place of need and use us to help them if this is your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Help us, Lord, to be more aware of our Mother Earth, our common home, and the pain that she is going through because of us. Guide us to use fewer fossil fuels, to waste less, to tread lightly wherever we go, and to share the goods that you have provided for all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, in this time of pandemic, 
You are teaching us to cherish our brothers and sisters all around the world. Help us not to, not to become fatigued, but to remain responsible in our actions and feel empowered to help others by wearing our masks, sanitizing, keepals, keeping social distance, and being vaccinated. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. With great gratitude, we bring before you, Lord, the frontline workers in this pandemic. Please protect all healthcare workers, farmers and salespeople, teachers and students, our beloved elderly parents, and whoever might be compromised. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For our own prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Lord God of all creation, we ask that you hear us, protect us, and care for us, as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. This will be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of Christ's name, for our good and for all God's church. O God, you give us the gift of true prayer and penance. Graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and that by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed men and women in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we've brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Booty our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Lord, grant that your faithful, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and through this heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we merit an eternal share in his life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace and joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.